Putting intelligence into the home can be a little bit of a challenge, but that all changes now with BridgeTech and FTDI's collaboration. FTDI have USB to UART technology along with power delivery for powering small networks. And when that's coupled with BridgeTech's video technology and a Raspberry Pi 2040, that gives you an intelligent home. So nice to see you, Fred, here at Embedded World 2022, back at the FTDI stand. Yep. How's the show been going so far? It's been fairly busy, uh, very busy yesterday. Uh, a good start in the morning, but uh, quieter in the afternoon, uh, just like you'd expect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now we've got some exciting new technology on display here. Oh, we We've... certainly do. <laughs> and it's all integrated here into this display platform which you've been working on with RichTech. Could That's you correct, yeah. take us a little bit through what's inside? Okay. Uh, a brief look. It's, uh, the, the product name is IDM 2040. Okay. Uh, IDM stands for Intelligent Display Module. Uh, the 2040 is quite interesting though. Where, where did that come from? Well, to, to find out the answer, uh, think of the new Raspberry Pi microcontroller that's uh, taking the market by storm. Um, so, uh, just a word about the Raspberry Pi since I mentioned it. Yeah. Uh, why, why do we use the Raspberry Pi microcontroller? Apart from the fact it's actually available and very well priced. Yes, yeah. Uh, the, the, the main reason is it supports Python in the form of the uh, circuit Python in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, Python is one of the most popular uh, programming languages today. So we're hoping that will uh, encourage folk to uh, uh, d develop their own versions of, of the platform and use it in various uh, home settings or industrial settings, whatever they like. Yeah. yeah. So this is a really nice display interface mm -hmm. for applications like the smart home, but then yeah. the next part is the connectivity to sensors. Mm -hmm. How is that implemented? Okay, we have a dedicated, uh, what we call an LDS bus okay. uh, port in the back. Uh, LDS bus is basically RS485, um, over I squared C, <laughs> or, or is it the other way around? A anyway, it, it, it talks RS485 and emulates I squared C. Over the bus. Yeah, yeah over yeah. the bus. Uh, the, the backbone of the bus also uh, contains a high voltage between 20 and 24 volts, uh, which supplies the, the backbone. Uh, and a, the high voltage is, is in turn is uh, turn, uh, change back to five volts for powering the individual sensors, but but more from Gavin later. Yeah. So from the FTDI side, you're well known for your UART to USB converters. Yes, so so what's integrated ah, in here? Yes. Very good question. Well, believe it or not, we have a, a USB UART in there. Okay. <laughs> uh, what, what's new about that, Fred? Uh, what's new is it's, it's one of our new uh, versions that supports USB power delivery. Okay. Which makes it quite special. So basically what you can do with this guy, you can take a, a standard USB power delivery supply, preferably a 65 uh, watt one, okay. and just plug it in. Uh, a chip will uh, talk, talk to it and get the uh, USB power delivery to deliver uh, 20 volts, not 5 volts. Right. And the 20 volts we send along the backbone. Okay, and that's how we power the, the entire network we yes. see here in this demonstration. Yeah. It's very, very straightforward. No, no, no extra power supplies. Or, yeah. You know, so it's, uh, it's Fantastic. Quite cool. Super. Everything, all the connectors on the back panel, uh, they're all USB-C. Uh, you don't use them all at once. Uh, some of them are just used for uh, programming the Art Raspberry Pi. Okay. Uh, and for development mode. Uh, others can be used as standalone just if you if you just want the power supply and so on. But it's all USB-C, so we're not asking you to have an assortment of different cables. And and that's the key thing, isn't it? They two, have a drawer two, of them two day, Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so what sort of applications do you see this going into? Well, so the, I, I certainly hope to see uh, it enable a lot of uh, products that combine with the sensors. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, for smart homes or office management and control. And, yeah. Basically, anything you can do with a display and lots of sensors. Super. <laughs> but it, you don't have to use it for this. Uh, we've got a demo here uh, showing it connecting the, the same interface, but uh, connecting to a, a DMX controller um, uh, that can con control all your, your fancy lighting for your house or mm -hmm. uh, stage or whatever you like. Yeah. yeah. 
exactly. Well, it sounds like a, a really exciting collaboration. It's well, great we, to see yeah. this here all on the board together. It's been great fun putting it together. It's taken a while, but uh, <laughs> we've got there. And that's always a good sign. Everyone, you've taken the time, yeah. got all the bugs fixed. Yeah, yeah. We hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Super. Honestly, we have. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. So, Gavin, great to see you here at Embedded World 2022. You're from BridgeTech. Tell us a little bit more about what BridgeTech does and your role in the organisation. Sure, Stuart. Nice to meet you. Um, today we're at the show and uh, the background of BridgeTech is we've based our ICs, our embedded video engines, was our first um, entrance into display, uh, particularly graphic controllers. Mm -hmm. um, on this product, we're linking between FTDI and our partnership of BridgeTech. Uh, I head up the technical team uh, and I'm based in Glasgow, Scotland. Smashing. So what is your contribution to the demo that we've been looking at here? Okay, so the, first of all you see the display here and it has been run by our BT817. This is our fourth generation of our EVE chip. Now EVE is embedded video engine and we, how it works is we use a low-cost MCU and in this case, the Raspberry Pi 2040, yep. and we communicate over SPI via a graphic chip to the display. And the display can be up to 10 inches. So the display as well has a touchscreen capability. Is that also integrated or is that handled elsewhere? That is integrated, it's capacitive touch. We also do resistive touch, okay. um, but in this particular display module, it's capacitive. Now, when we look at the system here as well, there's other parts which come directly from BridgeTech. What, what do you contribute to the entire system? Yes, so the display and the back governs behind it. It's a multi-port system. And what we also have here is uh, some sensors. A couple examples uh, with the 4-in-1 sensor, CO2 sensor. And to link them, we're using our HVT junction box. It's just given a higher voltage. Yeah. And the FTDI chip is controlling the power delivery to give you that higher voltage, but we are bringing the final part of that to be the, the sensors and the connection. And when someone's interested in using your sensor technology, is, is it a, a, a chips and circuit boards, or is what we see here the, the finished thing that they can buy? Exactly, these are the finished things you can purchase these sensors from, from us. Yeah. We, we mentioned the four in one, obviously that saves time and space, just to, for the install, installer's point of view. Yeah. Now, obviously, software development is always a key thing for embedded engineers, and graphics is obviously yeah. a, a challenge. It's not a, a something that you do every day. Yes. So how do you get started with the graphics interface development and responding to touches? So in this particular demo and product, we're using CircuitPython, which is well known by uh, software developers. And all the, the demos have been written on CircuitPython, and they can be downloaded from our GitHub. Um, so you go to our website yep. and you can look that up and then if you have technical questions you come to my team yep. and hopefully we resolve that. Super. And what type of applications are you seeing your customers trying to develop at the moment? Mainly display modules. Um, we get a lot of questions about how the embedded video engine IC is integrated um, but with so many applications out there from our different size uh, displays. Yep. For example, it could be coffee machines or lift displays. Um, so yep. plenty out there. But this is a different solution because we're obviously adding in the sensors to the, this particular module. Yeah. Well, it's a fantastic demo and a great collaboration between the two companies we see here. Thanks for your time and guiding us through the whole solution. You're welcome, Stuart. Thank you.